What's up guys, how are you all doing? We'll move now on to doing the black. So you want to start off with that... Wait a minute, what the White walls with those windows <laughs> What's happening? there. Very dark, almost black. Johnny, black! <laughs> black! Black! Like the procession of light that leads us into the valley of despair! As I was saying, we're going to start off with a, a nice solid black. I've used Vallejo model colour black for this. I would avoid using game colour black as it gives quite a shiny finish and we don't really want that. For our first highlight we're going to take some of our Lothorn blue. The same blue we used on the diamond pattern and we'll mix a decent amount of that into the black until we get this nice grey colour. Feel free to experiment with using different blues and varying the amount of colour that you add. I think this looks fine for me. So we'll take that and just block in where the highlights would be. So here on the chest and then over here on the top of the leg. When you're painting black it's important that you leave most of the surface black. It's good to keep the highlights quite small otherwise it can start to look more grey than black so try and be mindful of that when you're blocking these in. You don't want them to be all that big. So we'll do the same thing on his arm. Just pick out anywhere you think that the light would be hitting. Generally, that's going to be on the upper edges of the muscles. We'll hit the tops of these little bits here on the back and then the lower part of whatever this thing is, some sort of backpack. Maybe that's where he keeps his pack lunch or something. And we'll pick out the top of the head. And on the other side as well. Now that we've blocked in where we want all the highlights, we'll add a little bit of water to our highlight mix, thinning it down to a glaze consistency. I find that when you're doing black, you can get away with a glaze that's a little thicker than normal. So it's going to be the usual process. We only have a very small amount of the glaze on the brush, and we're going to draw the glaze over the transition in the direction of our highlight. And we're just going to build this up over a couple of layers until that edge starts to blur out. Same again on the leg here, I'm just pulling the glaze up to the highlight and then letting it dry before I go back to apply another glaze. Alright, so you can see now that after only a couple of glazes that line has totally faded out and we're just left with a, a nice transition. I'll show that again on the other side here. You can see the glaze is really just wetting the surface and don't have paint sloshing about all over the place. If you find you don't have control over it, you've probably got too much in the brush. A good way to combat that is just to tap the tip of your brush against a piece of kitchen towel before you apply it to the model to make sure that you've got hardly any on the bristles. Glazing is kind of a similar concept to dry brushing in that way in that the less paint you have on the brush the better. So that's the leg done. I'll do the same thing on the arm now just pushing that glaze up over the transitions towards the highlight until that hard edge fades out. Kind of bored with that but now I'll finish that off later. Let's do his lunchbox instead. So it's exactly the same process here. You're just pulling the glaze over that transition and then while that's drying we'll do these little bits at the side. Alright, so just a couple more glazes here and this should be good. The thinner your glaze is, the more layers you have to do before this blends out. But like I said, we're using a slightly thicker consistency than normal, so you can do this in about 3 or 4 layers. I think that's starting to look pretty swish now. 
For the next highlight, we're going to simply mix a bit of white into our first highlight and a wee bit of water to thin it down a little so that it's more like a layer consistency. On the chest here, I'll just push the paint into position just like we did on the kneecap. So this is really just simple layering, pushing the paint over the surface and letting it settle at the top where our highlight would be. For the other parts, we're going to use that same blocking in method we did earlier. So we're just going to paint a line down the centre of the leg there. I often jump about using different methods for things. I think that some surfaces lend themselves better to different techniques. So doing that layering technique here on the leg would be quite awkward. So I'm just blocking in the highlight to make things easier for myself. On the arm, we're just going to place some small highlights at the upper edge of the muscles. And then the same sort of idea here on his packed lunch on the back. You can see that I'm making these highlights really quite small now. And that's the main trick when you're painting black. You want those highlights to be quite tight. That way your eye sees more black than grey. So hopefully your brain registers the surface as black instead of grey. So I'm sure you know what's coming next. That's right, we're going to add some water to the highlight thinning it down to a glaze consistency. Then we're just going to use that to fade out those hard edges from the last step. So you can see there I'm pulling it up over the edge of the highlight then letting it dry before applying another layer. I'm also trying to stay fairly close to the line so that we keep the highlight nice and tight. So there you can see after a couple of layers it's starting to fade out and just a little more work and it should look pretty decent. Yep, that looks okay now. On the arm we'll do the same sort of thing, just pushing the glaze up to those highlights. So I seem to be missing some footage on the arm for some reason. It's just exactly the same thing as you did on the leg. Just do as many layers as it takes to get that edge to fade out. So depending on how thin your glaze is, that might be anywhere from 3 to 50. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend going down the ultra thin route for this. For the sake of your sanity more than anything. You'll need to experiment a little bit to find the right consistency. It's kind of a balancing act really. If you feel like it's too thin and you can tell it's going to take way too many layers to blend out, you can just add a bit more paint to your mix. And you can always test the paint out on your thumbnail to gauge how transparent it is. So you might be asking yourself, can I see no colour at all or does the paint totally cover my nail? Ideally you want to find a middle ground between those two extremes, but in the end it really just comes down to practice and experience. Once you find the right consistency, you'll be able to find it again. And after a while you'll just be able to tell just by how the paint moves on the palette whether it's correct or not. For our next highlight we'll add more white and we're going to be doing some edge highlights this time. So I'm going to keep the paint a little thicker than before so that it doesn't run all over the place. 
All right, so I'm going to hold the model at a bit of an angle and I'm just going to pull the side of the brush near the tip along the edge of this wee packed lunchbox towards the corner. So I usually do these little practice strokes just to make sure that my brush knows where it's going and what I'll do is gradually lower the bristles until I just barely graze the edge there. That way you can get a nice clean line. Alright so I'll do the same thing in the other direction. You can see that I'm not lining across the whole of the edge, it's just around that corner section. That's going to give you a nice effect later on. We're going to add a couple of lines along the top of these bits at the side. Alright, that looks pretty cool. On the arm we'll add a small dot on the shoulder and then little small lines just at the top of the muscles. Now I'm going to add a little bit of water to the paint to thin it down to that thick glaze consistency and we're just going to add some little dots along the very middle of that highlight on the leg there. And then we'll do the same thing on those highlights at the side of the head, just adding little dots around that centre highlight point. Alright so the last step is to take some white and I'm not really going to thin this down because I want it to go on really nice and bright and we'll use that just to put a dot on the very corner here just like that <laughs> and again on the other side. Now the paint's dried a little bit on the brush here but ah there we go. On the leg we'll put a dot right in the middle. Then we'll take some of our previous highlight mix and add some more little dots around it so that it's not quite so stark. There we go, I think that'll do. I hope you got something out of this. I think there was quite a lot of techniques covered, so there should be something for everyone here. Thank you very much for your support. Stay tuned for more videos coming soon. Thanks again. Bye for now. Thank you.